All right, moving on to the next thing. Man, Michael Jackson, the legend himself. This dude, I've been telling people for years, people got to put some respect on Buddy's name. All right. This guy, he has a clip that is going semi-viral at the moment. And I want to play this clip from Michael Jackson. And y'all tell me what y'all think. All right, so he said he generated a lot of money for Sony, several billions, and they really think my mind's always just on music, all right? And, I, and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer myself would outthink them. Now I'm a free agent. I just owe Sony one more album. It's just a box set, really, with two new songs, which I've written ages ago. <laughs> so I'm leaving Sony a free agent, owning half of Sony. I own half of Sony's publishing, in, and I'm leaving them, and they're very angry at me because of it. But um, I just did good business, you know, the way. The way he said that, bro, he, uh, that, was, that was kind of like a flex and, and, and dig at the same just time. Do right? I just do a good business, just you know. So I love that he said they didn't think that I would outthink them, a performer, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking these artists can't fool us. They're the ones that we fool. It says a lot about how artists perceive and are looked at. But let's let, let me finish everything that he's saying. So the way they get revenge. The way they get revenge is to try and destroy my album. So, yeah, man, I think like many people have heard that Michael have owned like half of Sony at one point. Yes, but what I didn't know was Mike was out here talking about it like that. Yeah, same. Yeah. I thought <laughs> I it was something like, we learned like after his death. You know? yeah, yeah, I ain't nobody was out here like just speaking on the sh on the stage in front of people. I mean, I, I imagine that didn't make people feel any better about yeah. it, right? And there's a couple other clips though. Like I, we, we want to talk about the genius of not only Michael, but the genius that artists have the ability to tap into when it comes to the industry as a whole, entrepreneurship as a whole. Because one thing we're big on is like the money outside music or beyond just the streams itself, right? Whether that's merch, whether that's shows and different types of experience, we want to keep pushing that because enough, a lot of, of artists aren't talking about that enough or people aren't talking about that or encouraging artists to do that enough. So even as we grow, we're gonna have like more content creator entrepreneurs, artists entrepreneurs are figuring out people are, are getting that money because I'm interested myself, yeah, but, yeah. but man, I want to share a couple things with Michael while we're on this topic. Because, I mean, bro was really doing it, right? As a matter of fact, I'm not going to even play this one clip. I'm going to find this other clip. And you're going to be like, man, this this guy Michael was something different. But the clip I was going to play was just Dick, uh, Dick Gregory having people read off some of the artists that Michael owned, like uh, the Beatles, Eminem, Beyonce. I have a Sony, man. Just, just pick yeah. a name, right? But it's another clip I'm, I'm about to pull up. Check this out. Many of y'all will not believe that. Very few people have heard this that I know. All right, here's a clip of Piers Morgan, Michael Jackson's father, Joe Jackson, is being interviewed. Listen up for the people who are just listening and check this out for the people who are actually viewing on YouTube. Let me bring you in here because you were uh, a business manager for Michael for a very long time. Uh, you've brought some fascinating tapes. These are audio tapes. And I want to just go through some of this because uh, I once interviewed Michael in the late 90s and I was struck that there was another Michael Jackson here, the businessman. And I want to play uh, a tape before I come to you. This is him discussing with you, I think, uh, about a plan to buy Marvel, the comic business, back in 2001 or two, I think it was. Let's listen to this. We could easily go into Universal and buy. We would own Jaws, E.T., Close Encounters, you know, all the classics from a, from, from a Universal. Own all of that stuff that would allow us to do a Universal, I mean, a channel. Part of the Marvel channel can be not only the Marvel characters, but Marvel films like the catalogs. We could do anything we want from restaurants to, to retail, theme parks. Now, you actually got the financing in place, I believe, for this deal. Then came the, the scandal court cases, and it all got put on the back burner. Disney ended up buying Marvel and doing exactly what Michael had predicted and making a fortune at it. Tell me about this. That was the second part of his life. He 
All right, I'm going to leave it right there. We'll put the link in the description for y'all to find or something like that. But Corey, I want to get your first reaction on on that clip because I've seen it before. I want to know what you think. Yeah, I, I mean, I was literally about to say what he said. I was like, damn, that sounds exactly what Disney did, bro. Like, <laughs> it just, like, he was coming up with the MCU before, before they were coming up with the MCU. But, nah, man, this is, it's interesting because I personally thought that the whole conversation of, buying ip and like how lucrative ip buying was i thought that was a relatively new conversation you know like maybe last 10 years or so um and maybe it is like maybe it is still a relatively like new like mass conversation but mm -hmm. yeah the fact that but he was thinking about that back then like y'all want to buy sony you know one of the largest um you know that what has one of the largest publishing catalogs with however many of the biggest artists out i want to buy marvel you know what i'm saying uh, one of the largest IPs ever credit, right? And just literally just a limitless supply of money because of all the characters that they have and, and the worlds we can build into. And I know like it's maybe been about three or four years or so of me personally even knowing like how lucrative catalog buying is on the music side. Right. Right. Like that. I, I kind of got put onto that um, through my homie David who works for a publishing company. He's the one that, that was just like, bro, like you think like, for those of you, bro, they be thinking, like, rappers make money, bro, go look up hypnosis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, go look up hypnosis and, yeah. and just the type of money they spend on catalog. So, but I I didn't even think about, like, movie IP, right? Or, like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, um that type of IP and, and just, you know, what could kind of come from that. So, but he literally was, like, 30, 40 years ahead of his time with that shit. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Bro, it's, it's ridiculous, man. Like the way he he saw the game and like you said, understood IP. And I, I compare the artists today as to superheroes, right? Mm. That's the image. All right. So it's seeing those worlds combine and collide there's no one who really did that better so far than michael jackson yeah because if you look at michael jackson he had a video game on sega yeah like i remember playing that off the wall game he has a little white suit walking around or whatever yeah. he had a movie that had like his big old statue in it you know what i mean like he i mean he had like uh, in that movie, I think that was that same movie. It was like the little kid dressed up um, as him in the bad video. Like he had all these different variations and imaginations of himself, and did these different worlds and characters. So he understood the IP just from his own career, probably. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean. Because point, yeah. nobody else really did it to that extent themselves. But you know what? When I think about it too, Walt Disney was always like his north star. He mentioned Walt Disney, like Disney so much and studying that world and creating that to the point he, you know, he created his own theme park, Neverland. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I guess when I go through it that way, it makes sense that he understands IP because of what he's done himself looking up to Disney. Oh, oh, wow. Like Disney are the ones who who went ahead and bought that. Um, It, it makes sense. But like I think many artists can take from that not only the value of their own catalog or the value of like buying some other ip but just their own ip and creating something that's of that type of value having a character because you could just be an artist but every artist doesn't have the like character and point of view that comes with building an ip value like having a tv show cartoon whatever that looks like like we know andre 2000 did his TV show, mm -hmm. right? And that actually kind of, I feel like, helped 
codify what Andre 3000 is as a character. He was that in rap, but when you saw it in as a cartoon, it made sense and yeah. gave you a stronger understanding of who Andre is, right? Snoop Dogg, I think is the clearest example today of someone who has IP in like 50 directions. Like you could you could just see so many things. They just came out with not Snoop Loops because they got sued for Snoop using that. Snoop Loops. All right. They can't use <laughs> they can't use that term Snoop Loops. And so he call them Snoop something else now. It's some serious. Snoop O's, maybe. Oh, something like that. Man, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> Snoop Loops is wild. And you just throwing shit out there, actually, right? <laughs> yeah. you know, but that's but I think it might have been Snoop O's. But he's getting sued for it, but Snoop, like the character you know, yeah. right? Snoop, it wouldn't be surprising to see him have a cartoon if he hasn't had one already. Right. But you can see it. It's there. Yeah. Right. There's so many iterations. Snoop in the metaverse, like what the all that feels like. We know what the weed brand extensions all look like because his character is so strong. His yeah. image is so strong. And maybe everybody won't be able to do it to Snoop's extent. But man, like there's so many variations of that. And everything doesn't have to be the typical cartoon movie. Da 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 da. But Everything is there. Uh, every time you see a character in a book, right? Uh, every time, like anywhere you see characters, IP, right? On your cereal box, yeah. All right, on your candy, on your the, the toys, action figures, all of that, right? Are streams of income, which is why these things are so valuable. But it's hard to monetize them if you don't know how to monetize them. You don't have the team set in place. But boy, if you do. That sh- yeah. that number is crazy. Yeah, it makes me wonder too. Like, I wonder if like Michael's thought process was, "Hey, I could continue building out my IP, right, and figuring out these directions mm-hmm. that I can shoot off in, or I can just go buy some shit that's already shot off in directions that you know maybe I don't feel like I can go in, but there's definitely money to be made there." But he's talking right. about buying Jaws and ET. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bruh. like the doors that that would have <laughs> opened for him would have been doors that he probably would have never touched through his own IP, right? right, and his own artistry. And so I give him, you know, kudos for that, bro. Like even just thinking that far ahead because it's so wild, bro. If he if he had gotten that Marvel deal, bro, with the Sony thing, bro. I mean, you he's know, already you know, dangerous. Some some, man, them, some conspiracy theory, <laughs> true, bro. I can, I can understand. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, we gotta get this motherfucker out of here. Like, bro, he, <laughs> he gonna bring he, too much hope <laughs> to, to the future, bro. Like, no, bro. especially now knowing what Marvel went today, bro. That's wild to think. That's crazy to think about, bro. Bro, yeah, like out, to be out here thinking like that. That that's that's it's pretty scary for for the industry. Yeah, bro. Like, a terrifying. single artist. Yeah. The to be the artist. Performer, and you know why it's even more terrifying, actually, because it's not just an owner. The owners are scary in themselves. This person owns the majority or something, right? Um, and depending on who you are, right, that might be scary if you don't like that person or it's coming from the outside, so they not a part of your group. You you didn't let them in the room, right? Yeah. That can be scary. Then you talk about owning half of that company of all these various artists, and then a Marvel situation, right? But when you combine that owner being one of the biggest fucking artists ever, the and platform. what are the biggest, yes, the platform, mm-hmm. the biggest artist ever can has a platform to touch the people directly. Yeah. So you can control the people and you have the top. I feel like, did we just talk about this? Right? Having the bottom and the top. No, I was watching a podcast and they were talking about, they were talking about uh, Andrew Tate. His problem is he doesn't really have a whole bunch of allies at the top yet. He mm. just went to jail or something like that, mm. right? But he has so many people that are his fans and follow him. So that platform is why he's so dangerous to so many of these people at the top, right? You get some allies, then you're solidified on both sides, yeah. right? Well, you have this guy who can control so many people. You got people passing out, like the big one of the biggest platforms, megaphones ever. And then... You have ownership at the top on this side. It's, I mean, look, bro, that's that's something different. Yeah, bro. I mean, I don't think we've seen it. I mean, yeah, we we haven't seen that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think. Yeah, I can't <laughs> even think of anyone that's gotten even remotely close. close yeah, remotely close. Yeah, bro, that's crazy. Because he would have definitely been on stage moonwalking in an ET shirt, bro, if he had got that shit. Like <laughs> Selling merch, bro. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Why not? Like all proceeds basically come back to me one way or another. I do it. Yeah. You know? 
If I had ET right, bro, if I own ET IP, bro, we'd be wearing EP, uh, ET shirts on every podcast. Bro, on home, man. <laughs> on home.